Hey, my name is Arlene. I'm 22, and extreme female muscle growth helped me go from a damsel in distress to a wrestling champion. My story begins when I met Spike. The first thing I noticed about him were his muscles. I was out on the beach playing volleyball with some friends when he came over and asked if he could join. He was a pretty good volleyball partner and we spent the whole day together. That night, we stayed at the beach and built a fire. We started talking about our hopes and dreams. Spike said he was a wrestler and bodybuilder, and boy could I tell. I didn't really know what to say when he asked me about my dreams. I was kind of directionless. Spike said one day he was going to join the WWE and be famous. If you play your cards right, he said, maybe I'll let you be my wife. He was cocky, but it didn't stop me from falling for him. Things were like a fairy tale for a while, but his chivalry started to get out of hand. For example, sometimes he would just snatch things out of my hand like grocery bags as if I couldn't lift it myself. And he always ordered for me at restaurants. I liked that he opened doors, but did he have to do it every time? We had an argument over dinner when he actually said that women shouldn't be wrestlers. But when I challenged him and asked him why not, he just shrugged and said, well, you know. No, I don't know, I said. I could be a wrestler if I wanted. He gave the smallest snicker and said, that'll be the day. One thing you probably don't know about me is that I love a challenge. And that was the spark that lit my path towards extreme muscle growth. I researched fitness plans and I got myself on this high protein diet. I didn't tell Spike at first and just focused on my workout. It was pretty much every other day and I even started learning more about wrestling. There was this crazy old timer that said he used to be a wrestling coach. He told this crazy story about how he almost bit off Hulk Hogan's ear. He gave me a few tips and some of the basic moves like the double leg takedown. And he taught lessons I'll never forget. My muscle growth was becoming noticeable. I became obsessed with getting bigger and bigger. I hired Freddy to be my coach and he got a few guys to train with me. And I was picking up the moves better. Each time I'd get in the ring, they'd be more and more intimidated by my muscles. By the time summer came around, Spike was concerned with my body. Finally, I admitted that I was training and he didn't seem to like that news. He kept asking why I couldn't work out like other girls. Because I'm not like other girls, I said. And it made me want to grow biceps that dwarfed his. Sometimes people make comments about my muscles, but nobody dared call me any names because they knew I could bench press them if I wanted. Freddy signed me up for a women's wrestling competition, Women's Superstars United Annual Wrestling Championships. I invited Spike to watch me at the tournament. I was hoping he'd be there, but he was nowhere to be found. It kind of threw me off at first, but I was able to let it fuel me more because I was angry at him. I wrestled my way through my opponents on my bitterness. Spike liked me more when I was just a damsel in distress. But now that I was chewing bubble gum and taking names, he didn't want to support me. I didn't win the tournament, but the Woman Superstar magazine wrote a little article about me and named me as the best up-and-comer in the sport of female wrestling. I showed Spike, and as I expected, he said something rude. That's just female wrestling, what's the big deal? Something inside me kind of just exploded, and I burned with rage. I didn't think I was ever the type, but I challenged my boyfriend to a fight. Maybe we should both enter a co-ed tournament, I said, and we'll see who does better. <laughs> this time, Spike didn't just snicker, he gave a full belly laugh. Don't get me wrong, Spike had so many wonderful qualities, but his chivalry on steroids and chauvinistic remarks, they had to go. And I made it my mission in life to do better than Spike in this tournament. We both agreed that it was a friendly competition. But secretly, we were both in the gym getting our eye of the tiger on, desperate to crush each other. I didn't care about looking like a freak to the people on the streets or what anybody said. I was going to turn myself into a full tilt muscle monster. I started doing extreme challenges to work out, like pulling my own car to test my fortitude and repeating my wrestling moves until they became ingrained into my muscle memory. 
When I got tired, Freddie pushed me to go further. And soon I was counting the days to the competition. At the tournament, Spike and I weighed in at the same class, and there was actually a chance we might wrestle each other if the stars were aligned. What if I lose? What if I get destroyed? What if Spike wins the whole thing and he tries to open my door on the way out? Luckily, Freddy was around to tell me to get it all out of my head. He was right. And that morning, I forgot about Spike completely. I was taking down gals and I was taking down guys. I wrestled hard and made it to the finals. I was thrilled. And then I saw who I was fighting. Spike. Just before the match, he caught up with me. We don't have to fight, he said, but I refused to back down and told him so. And then he started talking about our relationship and asking what it was that I was trying to prove. But he was so condescending and assumed that everything was about him. He even had the gall to say that I could still be his wife when he became a famous wrestler. Take it. I said I would never be his wife, and we broke up moments before the fight. I'm not your damsel in distress anymore, and I never will be, I said. And he told me good riddance. The match was a blur of emotions and images. I could barely focus on what was happening, and my body seemed to be moving on autopilot. Spike started strong, but anytime he came at me, I'd bring him to the mat. He caught a few of my flying elbows. Before long, he was stalling, and I knew he was done for. We got into a close grapple, and he was close enough to hear me say, maybe I can get the door for you now. And that was just before I dropped him down the mat, and he tapped out. By the time it was hitting me that Spike and I were no longer a couple, the crowd was rushing the ring, and somebody was wrapping the championship belt around my waist. But that wasn't the dizziest part. After the tournament, news of my victory spread through the wrestling circuits like crazy. And one day, Freddie called me up and said there was somebody at the gym who wanted to meet me. It was the slick sports agent, Billy, who wore an expensive suit and took us out to an expensive lunch. He said that the WWE wanted to meet with me to discuss joining their roster. It was probably the most surreal moment of my life, and everything since has been a blur. They changed my wrestling name to Arlene the Hammer, and they scheduled me to make my debut match a victory and set up a storyline for me and everything. But I got a visitor in the locker room just before my debut fight. Sorry I snuck in here, Spike said, startling me. At first, I didn't recognize him because he had lost a ton of his muscle mass, and he seemed to be half the size he used to be. I was expecting it to be something to bring me down or insulting to women wrestling, but he surprised me with an apology. He said he thought a lot about what I had said, and he decided he didn't want to pick up another weight. He said that I was right, that he had put society's expectations on himself, and he put them on me too. For years, he thought that he had to be muscular so people would look at him like a man. Spike said he was humiliated by losing to me, but once he accepted it, he felt free in a way he never had. He no longer worried about looking tough, and in fact, I had inspired him to break away from the stereotype. And I told him that I would always keep an eye out in the crowd for him. It's funny how things turn out. All I really wanted was Spike's unconditional support and for him to treat me as an equal. Too bad I had to kick his butt in order to get it. Well, as they say, better late than never. I accepted Spike's apology, and now I've got my own cheerleader to sing my praises. Have you ever been pressured to be someone you're not? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Hidden Wisdom stories. Remember, when you share our stories, you're sharing wisdom.